What's going on, people? Welcome to the match preview. The big game. Palace against Brighton. And we're coming into this game with a very positive result. The comeback against City. Look, there's a lot to discuss in this show. There's player discussions. Youth versus experience. How should Hodgson set up and more? As always, if you are watching this on YouTube, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and let us know your thoughts in the game. Uh, in the comment section down below. And if you're listening to it on your podcast platforms, and if you want to see it on video, head over to our YouTube channel at Back of the Nest as well. I'm joined by Patrick here. Patrick, just before we actually talk about the game, for you right. personally and honestly, how big is this Brighton game? Do you look forward to it year in, year out? Is it a game which you value Utmost, would you rather beat Brighton and then lose, I don't know, two to three games in a row? Or how, how significant is it for you? I mean, I, I go way back to when it first started on the Mullery uh, and the Venable. So I, I get the rivalry. Um, it's important to me. I mean, we've had some very, very big results over them. Um, obviously, playoff, semi-final being one of them, probably the biggest. But um, it doesn't mean a lot to me. I mean, would I rather win this than lose other games? To a degree, it depends. I mean, if the other... Two or three results might have put us in the relegation zone, no. But to get one up on, on Brighton is a big thing for me. I don't look forward to the game ever, though. There's a lot of stress around it. Um, I'd rather not lose it. I don't have to win it, but I'd rather not lose it. But again, there's a lot of stress that goes on around it. And again, unfortunately, the game's never a good, well-played match. It never is. I can't remember a really well-played Palace uh, Brighton match. It's just basically two teams going at it, you know, Hammer and Tong wanted to get a result. But it's important. It's important. I'll leave it. It's, very, it's important to me. Yeah, and they like to be the dominant side as well. So it's a bit yeah. hard at times to watch it. But then again, we have got results against them and we have hit them on the counter in the past. So we'll be discussing whether, you know, we should go with a similar approach. But just in terms of the importance, you just say it's very high. How are you feeling ahead of the game based on what we saw against City? Because I'll be honest, going into the City game, going into the City game, it was very negative. But coming out of right. it, after that 2 nil comeback with Roy's comments after the game and Roy using youth players... I'll be honest, I feel like there's an energy that we haven't experienced as of recently. Like, there is optimism, a bit more optimism than there was before the City game. But for you, are you a bit more confident based on what you saw against City? I'm not going to go as far as say the word confident. Um, obviously, you know, being there for the West Ham, Bournemouth and Liverpool results and then coming home and seeing us, um, you know, do what we did against City, there's improvement there. But the improvement was to me, comes down to a little bit of luck. Because, I mean, the fact that we had to bring on Ozo, who played really well, and then he threw on Ahamada and uh, France, and they played so well after not getting the back of the manager, is a positive. But my thing is, is he going to play them against Brighton? If he does, then I'm going to say, yeah, I'm optimistic. But I'm pretty much looking looking to seeing Schlott back in there, well, in there, sorry, Hughes back in the lineup. The only thing that is a bit of a positive, I've, I've been hearing that Lerma should be fit, which is a great positive. As they came on late, maybe he'll start. Um, so from that standpoint, there's some positives. But again, unless I see a tangible evidence that Hodgson's going to back the younger players like Ozo, Ahamada, Franca, my opinion about him is never going to change. It's just not. Um, I feel a lot better again because we got a result against, against Man City, but it's nothing to go crazy about. We could easily get pumped by Brighton. We're back where we were, back to square zero. So... Let's just see how Thursday goes. Yeah, I, I get where you're coming from. But for me, I just feel like how the last 15, 20 minutes ended, his comments after the game, it gives me a bit more optimism. And we'll talk about the plays because I think it's important um, whether we should use some of these youth plays and and whether he will use it. I, I, I still feel like um, whether it, they start or not, that's, that's up for debate. But um, I'm confident more on the last 15, 20 minutes of the City game. And not only that, even against Liverpool, I don't know about you, but I feel like we've improved defensively. Like, our defensive structure, which has been struggling before, even I said it when we beat Burnley 2-0, that if it was another side, then 100% we, we wouldn't have kept the clean sheet because we were just leaking chances. But I'll be honest, in the last few games against Liverpool and City, we haven't been leaking that many chances. Even in the City game, we had a better XG than City, which is wild, especially at the, at the Etihad. But doesn't that give you abuse? Because for me, that's the more significant thing. Not just the fact that we managed to score two goals and draw against City, which is fantastic. But the defence is finally getting there. And if you have a solid defence and you have these attackers coming back, it gives you a solid fun, you know, foundation to build up on. And I feel like we are getting there again defensively, which is giving me a bit more hope. Well, the thing is defensively, 
uh, we've actually had, you know, we had the five clean sheets on the, well, with Sam Johnson in goal. So defensively, I don't think we were that bad. It was recently we were leaking goals. So let's look at the, the last few games. Obviously, two goals conceded against City, two against Liverpool, two against Bournemouth. Prior to that, there's one against West Ham, two against Luton, three against Everton. So, I mean... It hasn't been great. It hasn't it been has great. To, it hasn't but... been, it has been great. I'm not, but I'm not going to put it down to the last two games being better. I mean, against Liverpool, obviously, we were down to 10 men, which is where I just scored the two goals. I personally think that uh, Man City took the foot off their gas when they shouldn't have at 2-0. I should have scored more goals and could have scored more goals. Credit, by the way, to someone who everyone's criticized for a long time. Dean Henderson had a brilliant game on, on Saturday. Made some really big saves. Coming back in his first game on, for pass in the Premier League. Did really well. So, defensively, I think we were a little bit better. But I don't, I'm not really sure how I can judge it yet, D. I've got to see more uh, from us. Again, we've been, we've, we haven't had a clean sheet since. The Burnley game, November 4th. So it's been a while. So I've even been better, yes, but that's only because we've been so poor against Everton and Luton. So I mean it's and and Bournemouth. I'm, so. I'm just looking at I'm just looking at what happens on the pitch. I know the goal is conceded, right. of course, that matters as well. But as I said, like I thought the Burnley game, even though we kept the clean sheet and that was the last clean sheet, funny enough, I don't think our defense was that great. Like I okay. feel like we got extremely lucky. So I'm just looking at the performances and I and me personally, I do think there's been an improvement. Let us know in the comment section down below. If you do as well, if you don't, but um, that's the one thing I'm looking forward to. And you mentioned Dean Henderson. Let's quickly talk about him. He had a very well his Premier League debut, anyways. He had his debut against United, which lasted about 19, 18 minutes. But no. he had a very good Premier League debut. And, and I'll be honest, this is his time to shine. This is Dean Henderson's time to come onto the stage and prove all that that was wrong. I don't think many people, to be fair, have doubted Dean Henderson's abilities. More of a case of how we could have spent our money elsewhere. But if he continues to have performances like he did against City, Patrick, it will be very hard to argue against the signing, don't you think? I, I, if you, you can go back to the, I'm pretty sure it was you and I that did the uh, video when he signed. I didn't have a problem with it. I know people want to talk about the money. It's not my money. I don't care how much we spent. I know we could have put it towards a striker, but we didn't, and we're never going to do it. We saw an opportunity to get a, a top class goalkeeper who wanted to leave a top class uh, team in Man United. I think he's as good as Johnson. I actually think he's better than Johnson. Honestly, I really believe that he's better than Johnson. Um, he's slightly younger. I think it was a good signing. Yes, the injuries that he's had at Forest and with us have not been great. But I think Henderson's a good goalkeeper. And I think having two top quality goalkeepers can only make us a better team in general. So you're right. Johnson's out. Thankfully, Henderson came back at the right time, earned us a point. And I think that having him on the, in the squad is going to be a benefit to us, not negative. Yeah, and let's uh, let's get into the actual players that are worth talking about. And not with all due respect to Dean Henderson, I think he will be starting anyways. There's no real debate there. But it's about the youth versus experience. Now, the game changed when the likes of France came on the pitch um, and he had a massive massive influence. Ozo, of course, Ozo. due to the injury as well. And now there's this discussion that's going on. What's the predicted 11? Should Ozo start? Should France start? For you, Patrick... Do you think this will be a good game for them to get opportunity? 100%. It's a whole match. The crowd will be behind them 100%. Um, we have holes where they could plug into. So, for instance, without the Corey, for me, start Ozo with Lerma. Makes sense to me. Without, um, well, Jordan Ida will be back. So, that's, you could... Well, Lerma should be back that. as well, according to reports. I just said that. I said Ozo and Lerma playing Ozo yeah. and Lerma in the midfield. So you would have think he goes with the likes of Will Hughes. Um... No, no. I'm saying what I would do. I'm telling you right now, it's not going to be Ozo. It's going to be Schlupp or, or Hughes, which is going to upset me. But that's how the manager is, which is why I don't back the manager. But I watched I watched that game back D three times with Ozo. He was fantastic. Three the times. Leg three times. I wanted, no, watch, no, I wanted no, to watch no, him play. I wanted, to, I, wanted to watch, I wanted to watch him play. I didn't care about this. I wanted to watch him play, how he played. Did, uh, you, watch the, did you, you see the first goal, the goal that... I'll give you some like Netflix recommendations or something. Like we, There's so many other uh, things to watch out there to watch at all. Bro, I'm retired. i got plenty of time. I can watch Netflix and chill. I can watch Amazon Prime. I'm watching, you know, are you, you Amazon Prime? I, I'm watching Amazon. I'm watching Reacher. You watch Reacher? I watch Reacher, nah. then Reacher I'll out. be honest, I don't even watch Netflix, so all my suggestions, I, I, was, I was lying, oh, I don't okay. even have any suggestions. I was watching David Beckham documentary, then I stopped because I fell asleep. I've watched it already. I've watched it. It's very, very good. I, watch, watch the entire thing. It's very good. 
Yeah. Well, um, so going back, yeah. going, going back, back to David time. Ozo. <laughs> right, go back to Alex. David Ozo was so good. He helped set up the first goal, played the pass to get here, who played the ball to Schlupp for the cross. Listen. I'm not going to see Oda play a lot this season. That's why I watched it three times. I guarantee you I won't see him a lot the rest of the season, knowing the manager. So for me, if there's an opportunity for them to, to me to watch them play, I'll watch them. Franca was pinging balls from left side to right side, burning um, Carl Walker one-on-one. -on -one. It was just, I mean, seriously, how can you, you not watch that over and over again just because you haven't seen it all season? So for me, I would play them. But I know my, in my heart of hearts, you've got Schlupp, You've got Hughes, Ozo will not start. You've got Ayu on the left, he will come back in. And again, I understand that I'd rather France to start. For me, where we are, it's a rivalry game. The crowd will be behind us. I think playing Ozo and, and France will be a great opportunity. I know full well it's not going to be them playing on Thursday. Well, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm ready for that. No. Well, looking at the other side of things, do you think right. it's also risky to maybe play the youth depending on the fixtures? And this fixture is a very difficult one. The crowd, as you said, will be up for it. Um, it is a, it's going to be a high-intensity game. Right. Don't you think that they need a bit more experience? Do you understand why Roy would go with experience uh, rather than youth players based on, the based on you know, we're facing Brighton? I'm sure that's what Roy is going to say. But will Franca and Ozo D feel any better about themselves than they do right now? They just played against Manchester City, the treble winners, the best mm -hmm. club team in the world, and came away with a very credible point, point and were part of that point. When are they going to feel better about themselves? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They won't be any better. But I told you, I watched, I watched France warm up against Liverpool against Bournemouth. He looked depressed. He looked like a different player on Saturday. Why? Because he played, was part of a team that got a point, and has a confidence level. He's not going to feel any better. Then now, I say throw him in. Here's the thing, D. If it doesn't work out at halftime, bring on Ayu. Bring but on doesn't like doing a, well, are you, But you then again, I mean? should start, though, Patrick. I think Ayu should start. This way it gets interesting with France. I, I, would have, I think with France, I, I would be happy with him coming off the bench and, and actually having meaningful minutes because I think he's got that confidence. I think he's got that right. confidence ever since he came on against Newcastle and I saw him take a shot from like 30 right. yards out. I was like, this guy's got nothing to fear. He's literally 19, 20 years old. And we lose a four 0 away from home. He's still taking shots, so I think he's got a confidence. Maybe he gets a bit more meaningful minutes. But then again, I think with Ozo, funny enough, there's more of a debate because ever since he came on against his date for his day for his debut under Patrick Vieira, I think he's looked physically ready. I don't think that I don't think he struggles with the physical aspects of the right. game. Like I, I think he's more physical than some of our senior pros out there. And to be fair, against City, not only did he come on, he had a very positive game. So I think there's a healthy debate in midfield, but. Out wide, I think it might be a bit too soon for France to start. And that's yet. fine. I think IU would make sense for this game because IU's actually been having a very good season. I agree with you. But what I was saying, my point was, though, that they're both going to be as much in confidence as they're ever going to be if you're going to start them. Yes, you're right. I mean, even I just said that. I said I will probably start. I had no problem with that. But you, you're, you've, you've lost the core rate. For me, instead of talking about going out in January and buying a replacement, you have one in David Ozo. You have one. Yeah, you got Hughes and, and Reed of all the yeah, stuff. Yeah, but I'm telling yeah. you, Ozo, for me, is the best fit to put in there with Lerma. You know, Lerma can help him out. And then you can put Eze in front Lerma, of them and you're good to go. Ozo, Eze. And by Eze. the way, these youngsters will make mistakes. They will make mistakes. Of course they and, will. And that's fine. And, and, and you know what? I, I honestly, I wouldn't be against them making mistakes. I'd I'd be okay. Of course, you want your team to win games, and some right. of these mistakes might be bigger than other mistakes. Some of you know some of the other players may make, but for me, like they're they're young, they're going to learn. But yeah, the raw talent is there. It's now for yep. them to go out there and get experience. And you know what? I've said it before, and I'll say it again. This academy that we have, yes, we build academy facilities, but as someone who grew up in South London, as someone who have seen scouts of Southampton and the Fulhams come to, you know, my school back in the day. Um, right, and right. Palace not having the pool because of the facilities. Now we do have the pool because of the facilities. We have incredible yeah. facilities. I'm telling you now, Palace can be our own unique club just by our academy. We 100% can because the catchment area and the amount of borders that come out from South London is unreal. All we have to do now, and, we, and we've got them in our academy. I think in the next two to three years, with the right manager, 
People are right. going to be very that's surprised the about case. that. I think Palace that's can be case. talked about around the whole of the UK about that's the that's the academy. That, uh, how good are Palace's academy? Like I think we can be our uni. People talk about our fans now, but I think our academy actually can be the next big thing. Um, and a hundred percent, you know, think that that will be the case with the right manager. I agree. We're seeing it even. We're seeing it even right now with the with the academy results that we're getting, and you know, fresh some of these big teams. And it's only going to get better with the facilities and let these players grow. And I think also it's, it should should get opportunities. Now is a perfect time with the amount of injuries that we have. And as you said, the Corey, the Corey's out injured. We're talking about replacements. Why would we go and get a replacement for six months? Just use right. Ozo. Use Ozo. Uh, He's there. 100%, He's there. Hundred percent. Let's look at the let's look at the league table. Um, pre game week eighteen. Of course, if you're listening on a podcast platform, you won't be able to see it. But Palace right now sit fifteenth with um. 17 games with and 17 points. Typical Palace. If we were to win this game, we could potentially go up to 12, depending on other results. And a loss could bring us down to 17th. Then again, depending on results as well. So it's basically stuck between 12th and 17th, Patrick. Hey, I have yeah. I have a stat for you. Yeah. Do you know where we were uh, under Vieira under, after 17 games last season? How many points Probably we had? 15. 12. We had... We had we had we were 12 we had we had five more points so five more but, points and, again, and we had no wait wait wait, wait let me finish we had exactly the same amount of same amount of goals scored and goals scored against i, I just looked it up but we had five more points last year at this time i'm just mm. saying so i think the league is a bit more competitive this year and you can say whatever you, you want i'm just throwing out i'm just throwing out you can say what you want you really think you really think luton sheffield united and Vernon yeah, the team that got last year went great either. I mean, bro, we, bro, we, we bro, 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 away from you're, them anyway. Bro, I love you. You're 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 mad. You think your three teams are better than Leicester? I South think the Hampton, league is more competitive. And Leeds? No, it's not. I'm not saying. Not, I'm not talking not about top to bottom. Teams. Not top to bottom. It's not. Not top I, to bottom. I, it's not. It depends. I don't, I don't know. I feel like there's tighter games this year. There are tighter games this year. I, I, I think that I think the race for the title is going to be tighter. Hundred percent. Uh, you know, obviously Liverpool. Arsenal, City, Villa, but I don't think the league is better than it was last year, top to bottom. No way. So, but the Forest, Forest sacked Steve Cooper, and he's been did. on our radar as well, of course. Um, right. And he has been for a while because Doug Friedman, according to reports, um, he's a he's a massive fan of of Cooper, he and is. also we were linked with him before we got Vieira as well. Right now, you haven't been a massive Hodgson fan, me either, especially after the Bournemouth game. Even though there has been improvements in the last few games. When you look at the league table, which we just did, and you see Palace sit, you know, sitting 15th, and, and if you're worse to lose the game, you're going out to 17th. Right. Is Hodgson still under pressure, Patrick, for you? Or do you think these last few games and performances have uh, bought him the time? I, I always said that the five-game stretch is what I'm looking at, not just the two games. So I'm still looking at Brighton to be part of this mixture, Chelsea and Brentford. Get back to me. Uh, December 31st, basically, when I was when the, January 1st, let's just say, let's see how we are there. If we get no points next three matches, I don't know how you can keep him. If we get a win, he can definitely stay. If we get two, is obviously no problem. But my point is, if you're going to tell me we don't get we don't go in the next three matches, D, that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's nine games without a win if we don't win the next three games. And if so, mm. to me, that's sackable. I mean, mm. even Parrish would admit that he did that with Vieira, right? I mean. I think Vieira must yeah. have, what was it, 10 games? So I don't see how he can not win a game next to me and, and keep his job. But again, I don't know. You were talking to me pre-show about potentially him getting an extension for a year. So I don't know what I'm I want to I'm joking, I'm uh, joking. That's, that's oh, odd report. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought you were being serious. So, But I do know, like I told you before, I know for a fact that Doug is a massive Steve Cooper fan. He's now available. So the fallback has to be, if Hodgson doesn't get the job done, then come early January, they hire Cooper and then go from there because I know for a fact they love Steve. And I say they, I mean Parrish and Dougie love Cooper. So now he's available. To me, it's, it's pretty much a no-brainer. So in a way, despite the results, I know you talk about results, but even right. without the results, do you think this adds a pressure because they don't want to lose Steve Cooper to another club if you rate him so much? Like, that's you, a, you have to make serious discussions now. That's now a that's massive... Actually, like, that's a massive shout, D. Maybe if you hear rumors that X, Y, and Z club is looking at him, I don't know who would be looking at him in the Premier League, maybe abroad. Mm. Maybe that puts pressure on us. To, that's a great... I didn't think about that, you know, maybe. But again, I think they've already put the feelers out to Cooper already. They have 
there was a rumor that we, might, we were going to actually try and get him from Forest when he was under contract. So Cooper knows yeah, yeah, they, they like him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so right. I just think that it's up to Cooper. Listen, Cooper holds all the cards as far as Palace goes. He wants to come to Palace, he can come to Palace. Do you know what I mean? He wants to go somewhere yeah. else, I guess he can. So it's a great point. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see what happens. That's a great, great yeah. point, though. Let's put it all about Brighton. I'll be honest. <laughs> Without, of course, we've got our Palace glasses on. And this is no hate towards Brighton. I'm trying to be as least biased as I possibly can. They haven't been that great this season, Patrick. In the Premier League, anyways. In the, in the Europa League, they're in the last 16. But in the Premier League, they've been a bit inconsistent. The most recent game against Arsenal, they got outclassed. I know it's against Arsenal, but it was just so Brian unlike. Like, they literally had, like, one shot on target all game. And it... It was it was horrible to watch. And before the bright, you know, they lost to Arsenal in the Premier League, uh, Premier League two 0 The only drew were Burnley one or Patrick, uh, beat Brentford two one, uh, lost to Chelsea three two. Brighton haven't been that great. What have we made of them? Hold on a second. Now they haven't been great of late, but early in the season, right? I'm looking at the results. They beat, which we couldn't do. They beat Wolves four one away. Could we do that? Maybe, possibly. They beat Newcastle three one at home. They beat United 3-1 away. We beat United 1-0 away. I mean, yeah. they're not terrible yeah, results. You're right. You're, you're right. They lost to Chelsea 1-0, 6-1 hammering to Villa. I think that, and the people talk about it, I think the European, um, uh, the newness to that has been a big a big factor. But they 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 got through it. They got through the knockout, the, the group stages. They're in the knockout stages now. I think nine, if you told any, any Brighton fan, come December, you're in ninth place and you're in the knockout stage of the of the Europa League. Would they take it? 100 percent So you might might say they're not as good as they were last year. And I could argue that they probably aren't. But again, they've lost two. They lost McAllister. They lost Caicedo, right? They sold those two. Mm. They did lose. They've lost Enciso and Estupian to injury. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. And I don't care who says it in the chat. I'm jealous of Brighton. I don't care what you say about them. Ninth place, Europa League? Nah, man, I'm taking that. I would take that right if I was a Palace fan. So Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. But that's, that's thinking about it as like a Brighton fan. I'm not saying Brighton fans will be upset, but I'm talking in, in a Palace perspective. When you look at the league form, they haven't been that great. Maybe you can blame the Europa League and injuries for that. But then again, when you... The, in the in the last five games, Patrick, they, they lost to Arsenal. I, so I, look, I, I know, I'm got, looking at it. I'm looking at it. I see it. I see one, it. Two, I think they've got two wins in the last five. One, two, three, four. Win. Yeah, they've league. got two wins in the they, last five. They, right, league. They've won in the Europa League. But you're right, in the league, they haven't won. They, they, beat, they beat Brentford. They beat Forest. They drew to um, Sheffield United. They drew to Everton. They drew to Fulham. You're right. But again, yeah, look at this. A lot of Europa League games in there. The Ajax, there's, you know, there's Ajax home and away. There's been Aiki Athens. You know, I think their focus has been on the league. Again, I'm not trying to say, <laughs> listen. Right, Paris fans, obviously, we don't like Brighton, but again, I think considering what they had to deal with in 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 the totality, I think ninth and Europa League. I'll take that. I was a Paris fan. I'll take that. I mean, you like, I mean, I mean, I mean, wouldn't I mean, take that. What do we say right now? What are we talking Ronald's about right now? in the Europa let's, League. Yeah, let's, let's, be honest, let's be honest. Top ten. Like, Come on. Let's 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 yeah, try. Yeah, 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 but then again, but then again, my point is, I think Brighton are there. Not for the taking, but I think this is a very good opportunity to go and get a win because I don't think they've been that great. I and wouldn't say D very good time. I think it's a it's an okay. I would say it's okay. I would say it's very good. No, no, okay. The reason why I'm saying okay, it's a very good time because remember, go let's talk about we talked spoke about our players, but Eze's coming back. How many games has no, Eze that's... and Elisa played so far this season? One, yeah. and right. and he got injured. And we lost oh, it. And we lost yeah. it. Yeah, we lost yeah. And it. Yeah, and it was it, there was an injury to Eze. So right, did he get injured during the game? It was during the game, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's not even yeah. like one. This we haven't even played one full game together. And I'll be honest, when you look at Eze and Elisa, yes, we've seen brilliance of Elisa by himself and Eze, but the link up play between both of them is fantastic. So you have Eze and Elisa on a pitch, and then you have some of these youngsters who might get an opportunity coming off the bench, depending on how the games go in. That in combination with how Brighton have been so far this season in the league, give me that boost. Call me Dilu, do all you want. But I, I understand give that. I understand I, 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 I that. I think, I think, I think and, and we've seen it in the past, I don't think Roy Hodgson's going to press. I don't think we're going to press him on the front foot. I think we're going to sit back. Now, yeah. is it going to be frustrating? Yes. But, <laughs> this is a big but, because this was very yeah. annoyed about the first half against City, despite it being City, is that we didn't seem like we had a game plan to attack. We just right. seemed like we just wanted to defend. As long as we have an attacking game plan, as well as defending, and we just want to hit them on the counter... 
I'm fine with that. And I think that can work with Eze and Elise because they're great ball carriers. So we can hit them in a counter. So for me, Patrick, I'll be okay with us having 30% possession or 35 as long as we have meaningful chances in attack. But for you, as a Palace fan, do you want us to see, you know, maybe take the game to Brighton, especially at home? Because I just don't see that happening under Roy. He hasn't. See, that's, see, that's the caveat, right? We always have the caveat with, with who the manager is. That's the problem. I'm not happy with 30% possession at home. I think that's a terrible thing to watch, terrible thing to do. I think that's ridiculous. But I have to caveat with it. It's Hodgson, so we're probably going to sit back and give Brighton the ball. But I told you that. Remember we had an argument the first match of the season against Arsenal. What did I say to you? I hated that game because we, we conceded all the... Well, we, we, need go, no, we need to go result. It was a penalty. Right, right. It was a penalty. I, I get that. I know. I get that. But my point is, I just feel like at home... But I'm getting to... I understand it. This is under Roy Hodgson. You have to limit your expectations. So, I, of course, we're going to sit back. I mean, will I take, you know, one shot on goal, 20 minute possession, and then Mateta back heel goal to win 1-0? Of course, I'll take that. We did that already, right? Mm -hmm. that happened before. So, I'll take it. But well, ben, I think have it one that way. The box. And one goal. Exactly. I, I, that was, another, was that the same game? Or was that another game? Masterclass. Yeah, that's the same game. Masterclass. One touch. Wait, so wait. Mateta touch. scored that flick and Ben take it. No. That's different game. game right? Different game. Different game. Different game. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I will, if I'm a Brian fan, I will hate Pilots for just for that. <laughs> like, we've been getting so many jammy results against them. And I'll, I'll be honest, I'll take a 1-0, one shot on target, one touch. Like, I'll take it as long as we beat them. Because for me, it's, it's about results. Under Roy, we're not going to play great football. Oh, well. Please in football, he has a certain ways. As long as we get results, then it's fine. But that's a that's a big if. But yeah, I mean, we we have got we have got some funny funny games against Brian, especially at their ground more than our ground. I think they what, what was the score when they last faced us at our ground? I'm pretty sure they beat us, right? Uh, last time, no one one. Remember, it was the Tompkins goal. Yeah, Tompkins goal. Oh, we got very lucky. Oh, we yeah. to the goal, right? Yeah, right. Um, right. When he yeah, decided, well, hand, hand, yeah. hand the ball, hand the ball to Tompkins. Yeah, yeah. Double, I mean, I, I'll take that actually. It's just like every single no, time. No, my my bad. The Mateta goal was the same. Benteke. It was two one. Is right. it 90, 90 plus five? Yeah, Benteke goal. That's massive, that jammy. Look, 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 look at the stats. Let me see how many shots we had on goal. We had three shots on goal. We scored two goals. They had twenty five shots on goal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I gotta watch it. We gotta watch it. We don't. Yeah, me and Nick, we gotta watch it. Five shots on goal. during COVID time. Yeah, it was during yeah. COVID times. I'll, I'll never yeah. forget that. But yeah, look, we have we have we have been lucky. I can admit that as as a Paddis fan against Brighton. But then again, I'm not complaining one bit. But Patrick, let's talk about sport predictions now. Huh? It's, <laughs> I said on the opposition preview by the way, which is out with a Maz from Seagull Social. Make sure to check it out because he does make some interesting claims about Palace players. Let's just say that, and he gives his opinion on Palace as a Brighton fan. Um, I said one all. And I'm going to stick with one all. I just, I, I feel like we could potentially concede a goal, but Brian, they haven't kept the clean sheet in a very long time. In fact, the last time that they did that, they kept the clean sheet was um, literally, um, especially in the Premier League, when, when, when was it? It was, geez, it was back in 30th of September. They get, no, no. That's that's six one. I read that wrong. I don't think they've kept the clean sheet this season, Brian. I'm pretty yeah. sure Matt said, he, Matt said no. he they have they have they have all year. They haven't had a clean sheet. You're right. They haven't had one yeah. thing. Yeah. In so we should be yeah. scoring a goal, and I don't think we'll concede that many chances. So I'm going to go for one all. What about you? I mean, I'm looking at the last eight results. Five of them have been one one. So I'm going one one. <laughs> one one as well. Last eight have been one one. Five and five and eight been one one. Yeah, it's mad. Yeah, I'll look. I think it's crazy. One, I don't one. know how we haven't lost more games to them. I'll be 2019 1-1, 2020 1-1, 2021 1-1, 2022 1-1, 20, 1 -1, 20 and then early this season, early this year, we took 1-1 one -one on the VR, obviously, and then we lost the 1-1, one 1-0 -one, one -one when um we had, what's the name in goal? The kid was in goal. Um, uh, Whitworth. Uh, Whitworth was in goal. We lost the Sunday March goal, yeah. So 1-1 one is a very popular Palace, Brighton score. I'm going to go 1-1. One -one. I'll take 2-1 mm. one Palace. I'm going to go 1-1 one -one Palace. One, I'm going to yeah. go 1-1 one -one Palace, as you I like to say. 1-1 one -one Palace. Yeah, 1-1 yeah. <laughs> one -one Palace. <laughs> Let us know score predictions, what you think um, with with your thoughts on the game as well. How do you see it going? Could Palace get a win? Some people, I remember on Opposition Preview, they were already letting us know the score predictions, saying that we could get in hammering. So I think everyone's just a bit all over the place. Some people are still hyped up after the City game. Some people are a bit more cautious. So let us know what you think. Thank you to Patrick for joining me. I thank you to every single one of you that's been watching it and listening. Um, that's from us too. And until next time, up the Palace.